Twenty-two twin transfusion syndrome, or shortly known as TTTS, is a serious condition that affects about 10 to 15 percent of monochorionic twins. In TTTS, one twin becomes large with polyhydramnios, while the other one is small with oligohydramnios. In this video, I will describe the pathogenesis, diagnosis, and treatment options of TTTS. Firstly, regarding the vasogenesis, this happens due to abnormal vascular connection. And to understand the meaning of abnormal vascular connection, I will describe the normal vasculature of the placenta, what is the normal vascular connection in monochorionic twins, and when these connections are considered abnormal. The fetus is connected to the placenta through the umbilical cord, which is formed of a single large vein and two small arteries. The umbilical vein is drawn in red because it carries oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus, while umbilical arteries are drawn in blue because they carry deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta. The placenta itself is formed of a single large space called the intervallous space. Maternal tissue adjacent to the space is called deciduum while fetal tissue adjacent to the space is called the extra-embryonic mesoderm. The extra-embryonic mesoderm and the wall of the intervallous space are collectively known as a corium. On the fetal surface of the placenta, the umbilical cord will divide into many branches before it invades inside the placental tissue. And, and this image from Wikipedia illustrates how the umbilical cord divide on the fetal surface of the placenta. The umbilical cord and the fetal surface of the placenta are covered by a thin membrane called the amnion. Decidual tissue will grow inside the intervallous space forming decidual septum. These incomplete septi will divide the intervallous space into compartments. Each compartment is called cotyledon. On the fetal side, the corion will grow inside the intervallous space, forming the chorionic villi. Smaller branches of umbilical arteries and vein will grow inside the chorionic villi. Inside the decidua, maternal blood vessels will supply the intervallous space with arteries and veins. Decidual spiral arteries will supply the intervallous space with oxygenated blood. Gas exchange will happen at the terminal part of villi, and deoxygenated blood inside fetal arteries will return back to the fetus as oxygenated blood inside fetal veins. Now, inside the intervallous space, the deoxygenated blood will be drained through decidual veins. And now what happens in monochorionic twins? Monochorionic means there is a single placenta and the two umbilical cords are connected to the same placenta. Normally vascular connection occurs between the two fetuses inside the placenta. And there are three types of vascular anastomosis. Number one is artery to vein anastomosis. Number two is artery to artery, and number three is vein to vein. Arteriovenous anastomosis occurs deep inside the villi. They are unidirectional. This means blood moves in one direction from artery to vein, and it occurs through capillary bed. So, deoxygenated blood inside the artery will be shafted to the other twin as oxygenated blood inside the vein. On the other side, arteriarterial and venovenous anastomosis are superficial. They occur superficially on the fetal surface of the placenta. They are direct anastomosis occurs directly without capillary bed connection. And they are bidirectional. This means blood can move from twin A to twin B or move in the opposite direction from twin B to twin A. This type of vascular pattern is called balanced vascular anastomosis. 
because blood shifted from one twin to the other through the deep arteriovenous anastomosis is balanced by blood flow in the opposite direction through the superficial arterio-arterial or venovenous anastomosis and the two fetuses will remain unaffected. In TTTS, there is deep arteriovenous anastomosis, but the superficial anastomosis are absent or decreased in number. This unbalanced vascular connection will result in a unidirectional blood shift from one twin called the donor to the other twin called the recipient. The donor will become small in size and the hypovolemia will stimulate the release of substances that decrease urine production such as vasopressin and renin angiotensin system and consequently oligohydramnus will develop. On the other hand, the recipient will become large and the hypervolemia will stimulate substances that increase urine production such as atrial and the brain natriuretic peptides. This will form polyhydramnus in the recipient sac. The disease will progress and the increasing levels of renin, angiotensin, and vasopressin will pass from the donor to the recipient through vascular connections. This will decrease urine production in the recipient, and consequently polyhydramnus will decrease or resolve, and the excess fluids accumulate inside the recipient body. And finally, volume overload will result in cardiovascular changes like cardiomegaly, myocardial hypertrophy and cardiac dysfunction. In addition to cardiac dysfunction, hypervolemia and vasoactive substances will result in the movement of fluid outside the vascular system, resulting in the formation of pericardial effusion, pleural effusion, ascites, and subcutaneous edema. This collection of fluid in body cavities and soft tissue is known as hydropsy.